some fr some fresh some fresh some fun fresh fresh fun fresh fun ways to show gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. There are so many ways to let someone know how grateful you are. You could give someone a shout out with your hands. <laughs> Woo! You're awesome! You can send an all caps text message. You are awesome! You can use the ancient art of flag semaphore. Go! You! But my favorite way to show gratitude is through song. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. I look pretty cool, right? Let me, let me, let me see that back. No matter what you do, I should be thanking you because you make me happy. Because you make me. Is that what? Is that what I look like? Never showing gratitude again, 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 again. In today's story, we'll hear about a time when King David showed gratitude in a really big way. And he wasn't even a little bit embarrassed.
are so glad you're here. We are pumping things up, we're shouting things out, and we are rocking this gratitude thing all month long. Now, gratitude is letting someone know that you see that they helped you. Now, there are so many people in our lives that help us all the time, and we should thank them. They could be your family and your friends, your neighbors, your teachers help you, your coaches, doctors and nurses. And you know what? It could even be the lady at the drive through checkout. You guys get the idea. And you know what? There are all kinds of ways to show your gratitude. Well, hey there, Jeffrey. What are, you, what are you doing? Are you here to entertain us today? Nope. You said that we can show gratitude by doing different things. And today, I'm going to show <laughs> gratitude by dancing. Well, <laughs> that's right. That's pretty cool. That's a great way to show gratitude. And you might be thinking at home, showing your gratitude through dance? <laughs> Nobody wants to see me dance. But that is actually what we're going to talk about today. Today's Bible story actually is about a person who shows his gratitude to the Lord through, you guessed it, dancing. So I can dance through this whole entire story? <laughs> Well, you can actually take a break for now, but don't leave because I need you to stick around and help me tell the Bible story. You got it. I need a snazzy dance. You got it. So today's Bible story is unlike anything we have ever done in the Hub Online before. So what we're going to do is a little different, and we need your help. So you're going to hear some music throughout the day, and we're going to tell today's story through dance. And Jeffrey is going to be our dance leader. So when you hear the music come on, he's going to show you some moves, and we want you to stand up and follow along and try to do the moves with him. Now, when you hear the music stop, I would like for you to sit back down and pay close attention because I don't want you to miss what's next. Cool? Cool. All right, so let's get started. Our Bible story today is in the book of 2 Samuel. Now, God's people, the Israelites, they had been fighting, and they'd been at war for a very long time. Now, there was fighting, there was battles, there were armies, there were swords clashing and arrows flying, and there was warriors shouting. So, hiya, <laughs> hiya! Now, you're going to hear some music. Why don't you stand up? We need you to join us. Try to do what he's doing. One, two, three, four. Now that's a great job. Now after all of this fighting, the Israelites finally won and David became king over all of Israel. And when he finally took the throne, he realized that something was missing and it was called the ark. Wait, wait. Ark. You, you, boys and girls, friends at home, you know she's not talking about the boat, right? That's right. Okay. Not the boat, the ark. The ark is actually a large wooden chest, and it's covered in gold. It's kind of like a treasure chest, if you think about it. And inside the treasure chest, the ark, is actually two big stone tablets. And those are the Ten Commandments, if you've ever heard that story. And also inside are some other really special objects. And what makes that ark so special to David and his people is that God's presence actually goes goes wherever the ark goes. So David really, really wanted to have the ark come with him. And what had happened was the Philistines during the war had captured the ark. But luckily, God's people had gotten it back. So David was, was planning. He really, really wanted to bring it back home to his capital city of Jerusalem. Because that way, he could know that God's presence was there with him. And he would be able to worship and give gratitude and thanks for everything that God had done right there. Join me. One, two, three. One, two, one, two. Wow, that's really great. So now, David had heard that the ark had been kept at a man's house named Obed Edom. That's a pretty cool name. If you want to try saying it at home, it's Obed Edom. Now, it had been there for three months since it had been taken back from the Philistines. So, now remember, because God's presence goes with the ark, Obed-Edom and his family and his land and his animals and his farm, they were all so blessed by God. So David, he was really, really excited to get that ark and bring it back to Jerusalem. So he was pretty excited about this whole plan. So he created this big tent and he got some soldiers with him and they gathered together and marched to where the ark was being kept. One, two, three.
Now, when David and his men reached Obed-Edom's house, they found the ark. And they had very specific instructions on how they were to handle the ark. There were special poles, and they had to carry it a very specific way. And they, they followed those instructions. And they started their journey back to Jerusalem. Now, you could see it all over David's face and in his step. He was pumped. He couldn't even hold it in. He was so excited that he only made it six steps before he had to stop everything. He stopped the whole parade of things going on and he just let loose. He couldn't contain his gratitude before he started dancing. He offered a sacrifice to God and he started dancing. The Bible says he danced in front of the Lord with all of his might. Now, we don't exactly know what this looked like. I think Jeffrey knows what it looks like. (laughs) Those are pretty cool moves. And you know what? David had some pretty cool moves too, I bet, because he danced the whole way back to Jerusalem. And I know that must have been a long way. (laughs) And you know what? All the other people that were around started joining in too. They saw the celebration that was happening and they had to do it too. So they they grabbed their trumpets and they were singing and they started dancing too. The whole place was going nuts. And it might have looked something like this. That was so fun. Now, imagine David doing that the whole way back to Jerusalem. But you know what? There was actually one person who was not excited, and they weren't having it. They, they didn't want to join in in all the fun and gratitude and celebration. And you know who it was? It was David's wife, and her name is McCall. She, you know, she saw David doing that. And she saw his outfit. He wasn't wearing his normal royal kingly outfit. He was just wearing a simple apron. And she thought he looked ridiculous. But guess what? David kept on dancing. (laughs) David continued to dance all the way to the tent that they had prepared for the ark. And he made more sacrifices and he gave all his gratitude and he just kept on saying thank you. And you know what? Then he passed out food to all the people that had joined in. He gave them bread and he gave them raisin cakes, you name it, the works. But then the party started to die down and it was time for everybody to go home. But that meant that it was also time for David to go home. And when he went home, his wife was there and I just can picture her with her hand on her hip and her scowl and her lips pursed together going, mm-hmm. She just wasn't into the, the celebration and the partying. And you know what? She really let him have it. In the Bible, she said, you are the king of Israel. You have really brought honor to yourself today, haven't you? You acted like a fool. And you know what? David told her why he did it. He said, He just couldn't help himself. He didn't care if people thought he looked silly. He was doing it to bring honor and glory and give gratitude to the Lord. He did it, you know, because he wanted to let other people celebrate with them. He told his wife, I did it to honor the Lord. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for your help. Now, here's what we should remember from today's story. Uh, I can help. I can help. So David, all he wanted to do was to show gratitude. And that that was the one thing that was the most important to him. Despite all the wars and the fighting and the battle, David just wanted to celebrate what God had done. That's right. He just wanted to bring the ark back to where it belongs to. But you know what? For McCall, she was really concerned that... Somebody might think that David looked silly or might think something negative about him. But David didn't care. He only wanted to bring honor and glory to the Lord and just give gratitude because of what God had done. And he also wanted to let others celebrate what God had done. And you know what? We can Mm. do that too. Our bottom line today is that we can celebrate what God has done. He has done amazing 
unbelievable, miraculous things for his people. And that includes me and you too. Mm -hmm. So why don't we stop and pray and thank God for what he has done today? Dear God, thank you so much for the example you have set with David in this story today. Thank you for that David didn't worry about what others thought about him. And, and help us to, uh, to do that too, God. We want to celebrate you. God, please help us remember all of the amazing things that you have done in our lives. And remind us to say thank you. We love you and we pray these things in your name. Amen. Bye. Bye, guys.